Hello and welcome to the next lecture in the course on introduction to computer and network performance analysis using queuing systems. I am Professor Varshapte, I am a faculty member in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at IIT Bombay and today uh, we will talk about observational or operational laws in queuing systems. So um, as usual let us start with recalling what we just did in the previous lecture. Um, you should now remember this picture, this is how we describe queuing systems, this is how we draw queuing systems. There are a bunch of parameters, this is the number of servers, uh, servers are described by an average service time, a service rate, uh, customers are described by an, uh, an arrival rate, an inter arrival time distribution, then there is a buffer and this is basically this number is C, this is K, the buffer size is K, the rate here is, uh, is denoted by lambda that this rate here is actually denoted by mu, the average service time is actually uh, denoted by tau and the overall service rate for this system will be C mu. So these are all the parameters right, so this, this the slide actually just summarizes that again remember C, K, uh, lambda is the arrival rate, tau is the average service time, mu is the service rate of one server, C mu is the service rate of the whole system. Uh, then we have the matrix of the open queuing system. Uh, where uh, you start with throughput, we denote it by lambda, that is the completion rate. You have uh, utilization, how busy the servers are, the fraction of time that the servers are busy, that is rho. Uh, then you have uh, waiting time is w. You can have queue length just of the uh, customers that are in the queue, not in the server, that is q. If you want to count everything, then that is n. And if you want to count the entire time request spends in the whole system, uh, waiting and also getting service that is response time and for finite buffer systems we also have a blocking probability we will use the symbol PL for loss uh, for this okay. and again this is a table that is uh, again reminding you of all of this remember this N, Q, Rho, capital lambda, uh, waiting time W, response time R, PL, uh, blocking probability. So uh, when you look at the slides uh, apart from the lecture you can refer to this uh, table for the matrix of the system. Now let us uh, move on to how do we derive this, okay. what can we uh, calculate easily about uh, throughput and utilization and uh, for doing this there is this uh, one method called operational laws and there are uh, various operational laws that govern the behavior of queuing systems and we will derive one today. Okay. Okay, so let us start with a, a very basic uh, our standard single server, this is infinite buffer, this is single server and let us assume that we are observing this for some time t. Okay and we assume that T is large, okay. so it is sort of the boundary conditions uh, have less effect. Okay. So we observe this Q um, and uh, what do we observe? We say that A is the number of, so I will always use this hash as, a, as something that denotes a number, okay. so number of arrivals in time T. Uh, let C be the number of completions in time t and let b be the uh, amount of time server was busy. Okay, during this time period, during observation time. So suppose we actually were monitoring this queuing system and somebody measured all of these things. Okay. So somebody measured how many arrivals came, how many departures happened, so this is a number, okay. not rate, these are number, number and this is time. Okay. Uh, so now of course by our notation uh, we have uh, lambda which is the arrival rate, this is trivial, this is going to be A by T, right. Then we have uh, throughput it is nothing but C by T because this is what uh, has been uh, have the number of completions that have happened in time T. So throughput is completions per time T so obviously it is C by T. Uh, what about server utilization? Uh, 
so since we have been given this time b somebody has measured how much time the server was busy. So, utilization is basically a fraction of time that it was busy. So, this is the rho is basically v by t right. Now, uh, a little bit of if you just uh, look at this uh, uh, thing uh, we will uh, we can actually uh, derive one more parameter uh, given all of these numbers how about can we write what is average service time ok. Just think about it for uh, a minute that uh, uh, given these numbers we can also actually write average service time. So, total amount of time that the server was busy was B and in that time it did C completions right C completions in time T completely done in time t ok. And remember that the time t is large. So, uh, if, if we started observing the system let us say when uh, one of these requests was in the middle of a service then uh, maybe uh, part of that time has gone. Uh, but still if we observe it over a long time this boundary condition can go and average service time ok given this will basically be uh, total time divided by number of completions right. This is basically time per completed request. So, this is the average time ok. So, this is going to be tau ok. So, now uh, if you look at this a little carefully uh, you can realize that this can be rewritten as you can just divide and multiply by c and you get this as c by t multiplied by b by c right. I just multiplied and divided this by c and now c by t is capital lambda and b by c is tau. So, this is actually what is called the utilization law we just derived the utilization law ok and that is for single servers that is given by rho is equal to capital lambda tau ok. This is one of the main operational laws. Now, let us continue uh, thinking about all this ok. Uh, now, suppose this system that we were observing now this applies actually with, with very few uh, whatever we wrote here there is actually very very few assumptions you know this could be basically g g 1 is all we are assuming ok. Um, and we could even have a finite buffer actually there is nothing here where it says that some of the arrivals um, uh, are not dropped ok. We are measuring the arrivals separately and the completion separately. But uh, suppose now we assume that uh, there is infinite buffer. So, now let us talk about a g g 1 q. Okay. Um, can we uh, think about what a throughput for a g g 1 with infinity remember when there is infinity here we drop it. So, infinite buffer if, uh, if every incoming request can queue it is never dropped then uh, can we think about what the throughput will be ok. So, let lambda be the arrival rate and we know that mu is the service rate. So, uh, for a moment assume that lambda is less than mu ok. Uh, so, if the arrival rate is less than the service rate what do you think the throughput is going to be ok and I will give you an example here ok. So, and I will give you a non computer science example. So, suppose uh, uh, your capacity ok your you are a server let us say you are like a server and you can watch uh, you can watch uh, 4 lectures per day. Okay, so, this is like your mu you can watch 4 lectures per day and but what is coming to you ok you are you are you are you go to a website and see how many lectures are coming there per day only 2 lectures are coming there per day ok. So, this is like the lambda ok. So, if if you can watch 4 lectures per day but only 2 lectures are coming per day then what is the throughput you can do how many lectures can you watch every day. Obviously, you can watch 2 lectures every day right. 
So, when uh, the arrival rate is less than the service rate uh, and uh, there is no nothing that drops, there is no finite buffer for dropping the requests, then actually throughput can really just be whatever comes to the system, throughput can be equal to arrival rate. Okay? So, uh, this is a major kind of a rate in equal to rate out principle that applies to uh, uh, infinite buffer systems. When it is infinite buffer we also call these things as lossless. So, there is no loss. So, this can be assumed. Okay. Now, let us take the same example. Okay, you can watch 4 lectures per day and uh, but now this is not the case what is coming to you is actually 6 lectures per day. Okay. But you can watch only 4 lectures per day. Okay. Suddenly the website is putting 6 lectures per day. Then what will your throughput be? How many lectures can you complete watching per day? You it has to be just 4 lectures per day, right? Right? How can you watch more? 6 can be coming, but you can only do 4. So, the rule here is if lambda is greater than or equal to mu, anything more comes, then throughput has to be equal to mu. Right? So, basically in, in uh, summary uh, throughput will be equal to minimum of uh, arrival rate and service rate. Right? When if arrival rate is less than service rate it is lambda, if al arrival rate is greater than service rate then it is mu that means it is minimum of lambda and mu. Now thinking about this a little bit it is very easy to extrapolate this to uh, now let us take a G, G, C system uh, where we have C servers. So, now the service rate uh, possible here is C mu, right. Same example you can take if there were two of you, okay, if we are talking about that two students should sit and just watch the lectures. Okay. If there were each one of you has the capacity to watch 4 lectures per day. If 6 lectures per day, so your total capacity will now be 2 into 4 that is 8 lectures per day. Now if 6 lectures per day are coming together you will be able to he can watch uh, 3, she can you can she can watch 3, you can watch 3 and you can actually watch 6 lectures per day. right? Suppose everybody does not have to watch everything, it is enough that one uh, you are partnering like your friend can see one lecture, you can see one lecture and that way you can finish watching the lectures. So, that way you can watch 6 lectures per day. So, your throughput can be 6 lectures per day. So, the same logic applies right for GGC uh, throughput is going to be uh, arrival rate uh, if arrival rate is less than C mu, but if it is greater than C mu then it has to be C mu. Right? So, here uh, 6 was less than 8, so your throughput is 6, but now if you know suddenly uh, lambda is 10, 10 lectures per day are coming then even both of you will not be able to watch, you can only watch 8 lectures per day. Right? So, this throughput law is very uh, intuitive actually, you can do what you can do no matter what work comes to you, everybody has a certain capacity and you cannot do more than that. Okay? So, and if less is coming to you, then you will not produce something else, you can only do whatever work comes to you. Okay. That is a main assumption here that the server is not creating work for itself, the server only does what comes to it. In that case, it is only going to finish what comes to it. Okay. Okay. So, now uh, we, we talked about GG1 uh, and GGC throughput, how about utilization? Obviously, we talked about single server utilization, we said it is going to be for single server for G, G 1 is going to be rho is equal to throughput multiplied by tau. Okay. Uh, but uh, now, now uh, can we uh, further discuss if it is infinite buffer what happens? Uh, we know that lambda is equal to small lambda if lambda less than mu and is equal to mu if lambda greater than or equal to mu. So, we can use this and, and say the same thing here rho is going to be equal to a small lambda tau if lambda less than mu and it is going to be equal to we have to substitute this mu tau here 
if lambda greater than or equal to mu, but mu tau is nothing but 1 and this makes sense intuitively we do not have to do this formula plugging right. If I have less work coming to me ok uh, then, then I can handle then I am not fully busy. So, this value is going to be something less than 1 ok. If uh, in the previous example uh, you were getting uh, 2 lectures per day, but you can watch 4 lectures per day. So, obviously you are going to be only 50 percent busy right. So, we are just making a formula out of that right. So, uh, here it is lambda tau or another way of saying lambda tau is also equal to lambda by mu right. So, this is a rate, this is a rate. If what is coming in is half of the rate of what I can do then I am going to be 50 percent busy. But if it is more, so in this example like 6 lectures are coming per day to watch but you can only do 4 lectures otherwise you are busy fully then you are going to be fully busy just watching those lectures. So, that is what uh, uh, this uh, these formulas are saying that uh, uh, it is lambda tau. The only thing that we changed from the utilization law that we talked about earlier was that this capital lambda can be replaced by small lambda if lambda is less than mu and it will be replaced by mu if lambda is greater than or equal to mu. Now again following the same style as the throughput uh, a simple way of writing this is that rho is equal to minimum of 1 and lambda tau right. If lambda tau is less than 1 uh, then we then the utilization is lambda tau. If lambda tau is greater than or equal to 1 like here what will happen uh, if I try to use the formula here if I try to do lambda tau that is will be equal to uh, 6 multiplied by 1 by 4 and this will be greater than 1 ok. Then you cannot say utilization is greater than 1 remember utilization is a fraction of time a server is busy. So, fraction means is it uh, it can only be from 0 to 100 percent. So, we cannot say server is 120 percent busy or what you know we cannot say that. Uh, so, uh, you have to say if more work is coming you can only become 100 percent busy nobody can become 150 or 500 percent busy ok. So, that is why if it is like greater than 1 then we can ju we, we just have to say 100 percent ok. So, that is what this formula is saying either it says 1 if you want to talk in fractions or you can convert it to percent and say 100 percent. So, this is the formula for GG1. Similarly, you can try for GGC ok. Uh, what happens with GGC? Uh, same thing now uh, it will be let us write the throughput first. Throughput is, uh, is going to be lambda if lambda less than C mu uh, and is equal to going to be C mu if lambda is greater than or equal to C mu. Okay, now, that uh, rho equal to throughput multiplied by tau utilization law was for just one server ok. So, we are going to go from one server to multiple servers by just simple intuition ok. Let us go back to the uh, this uh, your uh, example of the lectures per day. So, here uh, you are getting your capacity is now 8 lectures per day you and your friend are watching lectures. So, now you can watch 8 lectures per day. And now if 6 lectures per day are coming to you uh, obviously each one of you can watch 3 lectures per day right. So, each one of you is going to be 3 by 4th busy right. So, what did you do here you did you took 6 and divided it by 2 because there are 2 of you and then also divided it by 8 right that is how you got uh, sorry divided by 4. So, that is how you got 3 by 4 right your capacity is still 4 lectures per day right you can do 4 lectures per day total 6 lectures for coming but you are doing 3. So, now 3 by 4 is what your busyness is. So, that is what we need to convert into a formula. So, utilization uh, was lambda tau but it is not going to be lambda tau anymore the total work is divided between c number of servers here ok. So, it is going to get divided by c if one server was 50 percent busy two servers will become 25 percent busy right it is very easy ok. If this is if lambda tau by c is less than 1 ok and then of course uh, when it is 
when you are getting more work all of them are getting more work then it is going to be 1 that is when lambda tau by c is greater than 1. This happens when lambda tau is greater than c which means lambda is greater than uh, by mu is greater than c which is basically lambda is greater than c mu that was this condition here greater than or equal to. Okay, so, uh, this is now we got gg1, ggc. Now, uh, this is actually just summarizing whatever we have just talked, you know, I, I wrote on the a little bit informally, but this is actually repeating everything. This is the derivation of the uh, operational laws. Uh, I will not go over it again. This is for you to refer to once you have uh, seen the lecture. Okay, so, this was the utilization law for single server. Okay, this was single server. Then we have uh, gg1 remember we derived this thing throughput is equal to minimum of lambda and mu. Um, and remember that uh, some of these things the rate in equal to rate out uh, are for this condition lambda less than mu. And when uh, a queuing system is satisfying this condition it is called stable ok this is called a stable queuing system. When we know that if more work is coming to us or a queue or anywhere actually it all becomes unstable. So, it is a very natural word uh, when lambda is less than mu it is stable. Uh, again repeating uh, whatever I derived for uh, gg1 uh, rho is equal to minimum 1 uh, comma lambda tau this is utilization law for single server lossless system because when it is lossless we can assume that throughput is equal to arrival rate. Uh, this also I just derived throughput was uh, minimum lambda and c mu. And uh, this is about uh, utilization when uh, we have C servers. So, utilization is lambda tau by C if lambda is less than C mu, otherwise, utilization is 1 if basically lambda greater than or equal to C mu. We will continue this now. Uh, next thing, yeah, this is just stating rho is equal to min uh, 1.0 or uh, comma lambda tau by C minimum of these two for multiple server lossless system ok. We are still in lossless system. Remember this small lambda we can use instead of throughput only when we can assume that uh, for a stable system uh, you can assume that capital lambda is equal to small lambda when there is no loss. Otherwise even for a stable system we cannot really assume uh, if the buffer is finite we cannot assume that whatever comes in goes because some requests can still get lost. Okay, that is what we are going to talk about next actually. So, let us talk about now throughput of a multiple server finite buffer queuing system. Okay. We have C which is the multiple servers, K is the finite buffer. Um, I can just draw this here to remind you all of this. Okay. This is the buffer has size K, these are the C servers. Arrival rate is lambda, we are we want to derive throughput, this is C servers here. Okay. And so, service rate of these things are going to be C mu okay, and this buffer size is k. Now, uh, remember I was uh, talking about the matrix earlier I had shown a table P sub L is the probability that an arriving request is lost. Remember that L is for lost due to finite buffer being full. Uh, remember that this can happen in a queuing system even if lambda is less than C mu. PL can be greater than 0 that is because we are assuming some randomness ok. The inter this uh, it can be that even if the overall arrival rate is less than uh, the service rate uh, suddenly if too much work comes into a buffer then requests can drop ok. Even if the overall arrival rate was less than the service rate suddenly you can have a burst of arrivals and then the buffer will become full and things can drop ok. So, um, uh, right, so we have uh, PL as this probability. So, for finite buffer systems, how do we define the throughput? Uh, we define it as it is a very sort of simple definition, it is arrival rate multiplied by the probability that you can actually get into the system, right? Because once you come into the system, you are going to leave, uh, there is nowhere that the requests have to go, right? So, this is a finite buffer system here, okay. 
this is a finite buffer system requests can come of course there is going to be some probability of loss but once they come in they are going to get service and they leave. So, if the rate of arrival here is lambda then the rate through this is going to be nothing but lambda multiplied by 1 minus P L because if this is the probability of loss 1 minus P L has to be probability of uh, accepting right. So, it is just arrival rate multiplied by accept probability and that is denoted by this and this is actually applicable for any lambda greater than 0. We do not need to distinguish here between lambda less than C mu or lambda greater than or equal to C mu because even if lambda is greater than or equal to C mu loss probability will increase and finally that is what uh, takes care of the throughput through the system ok. And because of this actually because there is a natural loss finite buffer queues are considered as always stable there is no stability condition as such we do not have to say lambda less than C mu we do not have to say that ok. In they have a built in mechanism to keep themselves stable which is the dropping ok. <coughs> Now what is the utilization? Uh, utilization is very very similar we are just uh, following the utilization law right. Uh, if it was one server rho equal to tau would apply remember utilization law when we derived it we did not assume finite buffer. So, this is ok for one server, but if there are multiple servers this is going to the, the busyness the work gets divided you can assume that. Uh, all the servers are similar and each server does capital lambda by C amount of the work and if this is what the completion rate and the work that one server is doing then capital lambda by C multiplied by tau will obviously be the how, how much C servers are going to be busy right. So, utilization is, is very intuitively capital lambda tau by C and where uh, lambda is given by this from the previous slide. So, I am just going to go through some examples quickly. Uh, let us consider a single threaded server on one core CPU um, again infinite buffer let us consider just infinite buffer for the examples. So, request processing time this is tau is 5 milliseconds request inter arrival time is 10 milliseconds this is our 1 by lambda. So, lambda is going to be actually 100 requests right it is going to be basically 1 over 10 milliseconds which is uh, 1000 by 10 uh, this is 1 over 10 uh, requests per second request per millisecond uh, which is equal to 1000 by 10 requests per second which is going to be equal to 100 requests per second right. So, lambda is 100 requests per second and what is mu? Mu is actually 5 milliseconds. Uh, so, this is 1 by tau in terms of requests per millisecond. So, um, if I want to convert it to seconds I should just do 1000 by 5 this is 200 milliseconds uh, sorry 200 requests per second ok. So, we have our lambda which is 100 requests per second we have mu which is 200 requests per second and now we can just apply whatever we uh, saw in the previous slides right. So, let us see what we can do here. So, uh, throughput will be 100 why because 100 is less than mu so throughput will be 100. Utilization will be 50 percent why because utilization is nothing but uh, lambda tau or lambda by mu which in our case is 100 by 200. So, and we if we want to make a percent out of it we multiply by 100. So, this is 0.5 multiplied by 100 and we get 50 percent. I have purposely shown this here to remind you that so far we are not calculating any of these we do not I have not told you about how to calculate Q, Q length number in system waiting time or response time. Another example uh, now same example and let us just assume two cores ok. So, now we will use the same thing. Uh, this is tau mu is equal to actually 200 requests per second, um, lambda is equal to 100 requests per second, but now we have a c, c is equal to 2. So, c mu is equal to 400 requests per second. 
Uh, so again the same thing, uh, maybe you can think about it before I show the answers. Throughput 100 is less than 400, so it is going to remain as 400. Utilization now remember everything is the same about the system. So and just in, instead of one core CPU, we have uh, two cores. Okay. Um, and uh, so if we have two cores, it work is going to get divided. Earlier we got 50 percent, now it will be 25 percent. And if you want to apply the formula, it is going to be 100 by 400, right? That is equal to 0.25. So that is what we get. A couple of more examples. Uh, what I have done now is actually all of this is the same two core CPU inter arrival time is 5 milliseconds, request inter, uh, inter sorry request processing time is 5 milliseconds, request inter arrival time is now very less, it is 2 milliseconds. So uh, what is happening here? We have uh, again we still have 400 requests per second is the CMU, but lambda is now 1000 by 2 which is 500 requests per second. Okay. So, uh, throughput will now be 400 because lambda is greater than 400. So, uh, you the system cannot do 500, uh, it will have to just stop at 400 requests per second that is what it can do and the servers both the core CPU cores will get 100 percent busy. Last example before we wrap up for today. So, let us consider a network link of bandwidth 1 megabits per second uh, and suppose to this network link packets are coming at 75 packets per second and average packet size, average packet size is 1500 bytes. So, we have to do a little bit of calculation here to get all the units the same. First thing we have to calculate. Uh, so many packets coming per second of this size, how many bits per second is that? Okay, so, that will be 75 multiplied by 1500 or what we can do instead of this, what we can do is we can uh, actually calculate the average packet transmission time. Okay, we can first calculate the transmission, the, the service rate in terms of uh, packets per second. So, what I am doing here is first I am calculating the average packet transmission time which is going to be the size in bits divided by this bandwidth in bits right. 1 Mbps is 10 to the 6 bits per second. Then I am calculating the service rate as 1 over tau. Remember this packet transmission time will become the service time and 1 over tau is going to be the service rate and that is reciprocal of this and this calculates to 83.3 packets per second. So now 75 is less than 83, so throughput is equal to 75 right. Basically this link can actually carry 75 packets per second and what is utilization? Compared to its capacity 83 packets per second if it is getting 75 packets per second, this is the ratio, this is the fraction of time it is going to be busy. So, it is 0 0.9 in other words 90 percent. Okay. So, this is what again this is saying and uh, these were just some examples to show how all our calculations uh, proceeded today and uh, what we are going to do next is uh, high and low load asymptotes of various metrics. This is because as you saw in some of the slides the four other metrics queue length, number of customers in the system, waiting time and response time we are still not calculating. Uh, so, we will first start by calculating their asymptotes and we will discuss this in the next lecture. Thank you.